In this video, I'll be going over the read remote and write remote message blocks. They are new for Control Expert version 15. They differ in the other message blocks in that they use tag names to message back and forth rather than Modbus addresses. We'll start off with an overview of the read remote. On the top left, we have the input pins. The first pin is the control pin. This is an array of zero to three integers. The first integer in that array is the timeout setting. And then the second integer in that array is the firmware designation for the PLC we are talking to. So if you're talking to an M340 and is less than version 3.3 or an M580 that has a firmware revision less than 3.2, we need to put a one in that integer of that array. The last two integers are used by the message block. The next input we have is the enable. Now this pin is used to actually trigger the message block. Then we have an abort which stops the message. We have the ADDR pin. This is connected to an ADDM or an ADDMX function block. The difference is whether you're using M340 or an M580. On the left side of those blocks, it would be different whether you're using an M340 or an M580. For an M580, you designate the rack slot channel and then the PLC IP address you're talking to. On an M340, this would be your Ethernet channel, which is Ethernet underscore one by default and then the IP address of the PLC you're talking to. On the right side, we have the status pins for the message block. The standard ones are here at top. You have your done, active, and error. The status, if there's a zero, then the block is functioning fine. If it's anything but zero, then there is an error. And we need to re review that error in the help file. The extended status is, a, is the same as the status, but for each one of these pins, and we'll get in later on what these pins are. So if there's an error on any of these pins, it will tell you which pin has an error and what that error is. So now we're down to the actual data transfer between the remote PLC and this PLC. In this case, this is a read remote. So we are going to the remote PLC, finding a variable and bringing it back to this PLC. So on the left side, we have the variable name in the remote PLC. This is a string format. It has to match what that name is in the remote PLC. And then on the right side, we have the local variable. This is the variable we want the data put into. This variable, data type has to match the variable data type we are reading from. Next, we'll talk about the write remote message block. So the pins all function the same on this message block as they do the read remote. The visual difference is that all your messaging data is on the left side of this block. Again, this is the remote variable pin r underscore var and l underscore var is the local variable. So in this case, since it's a write, we are going to be taking the data that is on the local variable and writing it to the remote variable. Next, we'll do a demo of the message blocks. In order for these message blocks to work, data dictionary needs to be enabled in the project settings. So to verify that you have data dictionary enabled, we go to tools, Project Settings, PLC embedded, embedded Data, and then you have your Data Dictionary, and make sure that this is checked. After you verify that, we can build this project, connect to the PLC,
Now since we see a zero here on the status, we can tell that this is communicating. I also have a counter that is monitoring the done bit and the error bit. And in this case, we see the done counting up. This just acknowledges that these are communicating and that we are communicating without error. So we'll check out the read remote as well. And we are seeing the same thing. Now, to check the data between the PLCs and show this is working, we will go to the animation table I have created for each of these. I'm going to move this window over, and I'm going to bring in the PLC I'm messaging. So we have our flow set point. Let me go back here. The flow set point is being read from the remote PLC, and it is being put into sim underscore flow underscore SP. So I'm going to go to my tags. Right now we match. I'm going to enable modifications and modify this value. I'm reading it back and you can see it populating in my master PLC. I have other values on this read remote block and they are different data types. So on variable two, I have an array of reals, zero to four. On local variable three, I have another array of reals. And the fourth variable I'm reading is a DDT. So I'll come back here and just show that these are communicating For the next demo, we'll show the right remote. And that is talking to a different PLC. Come down here and we'll see that is a similar type of data being transferred to that. We have a real, an array of integers, and an array of reals. So I will bring over the program for the PLC we are writing to. And I will bring up the animation table, modify, And that is all I had to show on these message blocks. Thank you.